In this video, we'll be looking at 21 of the most disrespectful moments in anime. From extremely one-sided fight scenes, to diabolical characters who feast on ruining and disrespecting the lives of those around them. Starting off with number 21, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Pegasus takes this spot on our list, as he embarrasses Bandit Keith using a little boy. The power and pageantry that characterizes Pegasus is shown through Kaiba, who tells Yugi how he defeated the notorious Bandit Keith in the King of Duelists Championship. Pegasus called on a little boy, told him his strategy, and got him to fight and defeat Keith on his behalf. Personally, we wouldn't stand such disrespect. Next on our list is an iconic scene from Hunter x Hunter, where Kurapika delivers a beatdown to Phantom Troop member Uvagen. Young Kurapika has a sworn enmity towards the organization which slaughtered his clan. When he meets the man most responsible for it, Uvo, a man double his size, Kurapika challenges him to a 1v1 duel. There, our revenge-fueled hero chains Uvo and tortures him through relentless beatdowns. Eventually killing him, Kurapika adds further insult to injury by revealing that he brought a literal shovel to bury his enemy after killing him. Talk about confidence! Jojo has a huge repository of disrespectful scenes, but this one between Jotaro and Yoshikage Kira takes the cake. In part 4, as Kira is wreaking carnage in the peaceful town of Morio and beating up Josuke's friends, Jotaro Kujo shows up, threatening to beat up Kira's face to the extent that he wouldn't be able to appreciate his very expensive watch. Though Kira ignores his taunts, Jotaro uses his quick speed to fist trip Kira and then bashing his head over and over again using Star Platinum. Oh, when he's done, he also remembers to tell Kira that his watch is pretty damn ugly. Next up, we have one of Saitama's most glorious moments on television. There are so many disrespectful moments here that we don't know where to begin. First, we have Tatsumaki who disrespects her opponent, the Lizard Lord, by ignoring his attacks and responding to her phone call. Then she makes a lizard BBQ out of him and attends an emergency S-Class hero meeting. There, this powerful young lady meets the bald superhero Saitama. She taunts him by calling him a B-class hero at best, to which Saitama responds, What's with this sassy lost child? Just shows the levels between Saitama and everyone else. Speaking of glorious and iconic anime scenes, who can forget the You're Already Dead scene from the Fist of the North Star? Kenshiro is well versed in the martial art of Hokuto Shinken, which allows him to attack the internal pressure points of his enemies, causing their blood vessels to burst in an extremely gory sight. However, the impact isn't immediate, so every time his enemies taunt him for his weak attacks, Kenshiro only has to say, you're already dead, for them to realize their imminent death. Next on this list is Ken Kaneki's brutal scene with the psychopath Jason. At the end of the first season of Tokyo Ghoul, Kaneki is captured and tortured by Jason, who is so incredibly sociopathic that he inserts literal centipedes into Kaneki's ears. Sure enough, the torture turns the protagonist's hair all white and instills within him a burning, inhumane desire for revenge. When he breaks free, he delivers literal hell onto Jason, disrespecting him in every way and reveling his pleas for forgiveness. Ultimately, Kaneki eats Jason, the ultimate disrespect. Further down the list, we have Madara Uchiha, taking on the entire shinobi army all by himself. At the outbreak of the Fourth Shinobi War, all the villages of the Naruto world come together in alliance against the evil Madara Uchiha. Well, even their combined strength is nothing in the face of the mighty Madara, who takes them on all by himself. Mind you, this is one man taking on an entire army, and winning without even so much as a scratch on his body. And what's more, this is the first time Madara is fighting in years, showing disrespect to the entire shinobi world. Another example of a badass villain is Aizen, who shows Ichigo levels during their first fight. Aizen's betrayal is revealed to the Soul Society. A battle ensues in which the traitor easily overpowers his former allies. Then Ichigo appears, confident in his ability to hold Aizen to a fair fight. To his surprise, the man clad in white robes stops his lightning quick attack with just a finger. Well, we shouldn't expect Luffy to back down from ferocious villains, as is evident by his popular confrontation with the Emperor's Kaido and Big Mom. When Luffy finally climbs to the rooftop of Onigashima, he is face to face with two of the strongest figures in the One Piece world, Kaido and Big Mom, both of whom are frothing at the mouths thinking about killing him. When he arrives, they unleash a barrage of taunts at Luffy, who ignores them. He walks right between the gigantic presence of the two Emperors to tend to his fallen comrades. When their safety is ensured, he punches the lights out of Kaido, asserting his claim as the man who will become king of the pirates. 
Next up, we have Muzan, being an absolute savage. The main villain of Kimetsu no Yaiba has absolutely zero redeeming factors. He's just pure evil. This is evident when he goes on a rant when reminded about the number of people he's killed and all those who want to kill him. He simply says, just be grateful that I left you alive. Tanjiro's reaction says it all, since he is simply shocked at the level of shamelessness and callousness. The early villains of Dragon Ball Z needed someone to check their god complexes, and Goku did just that with Frieza. The battle between Goku and Frieza on Namek really is timeless. Frieza was really the epitome of evil, and his rise looked unstoppable until Goku activated his Super Saiyan form. Thus started a beatdown that was so incredibly satisfying that people watch it to this day. At one point, Goku was so done with Frieza's powerlessness in the face of the Super Saiyan that he quite literally complains to him about becoming bored with this fight. Ouch! Sometimes Araki really hates the villains he creates, to the point where he writes 7 manga pages of the hero just beating the living hell out of them. Giorno Giovanna did not like Sio Kalada, an annoying side villain who was really asking for a beatdown. When it really came to it, Araki did not disappoint. We saw Giorno beating him to a pulp for two whole minutes, all while screaming muda 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 over and over again. It was truly a beautiful sight. Next up, we have Ichigo getting his revenge on Aizen. Though their first fight ends in absolute defeat for Ichigo, their next fight is absolutely brutal for Aizen. With his newfound powers and training, Ichigo flies toward Aizen, who is mocking his enemies and threatening to blow up an entire town. The hero interrupts his rant, grabs his head and smashes it to the ground over and over again. There's nothing like Beerus showing levels to the Z Fighters. The God of Destruction is also the God of Ultimate Disrespect. Truthfully, there are few people in Dragon Ball who Beerus actually respects. Consider how he treats Super Saiyan 3 Goku, his strongest form until that point, and the form which helps save Earth from the onslaught of Majin Buu. Beerus literally flicks him like an ant, the ultimate disrespect for our hero. Next up, we have Mihawk absolutely demolishing Zoro and his self-respect. Very early on in the series, the Straw Hat Pirates encounter a warlord of the sea, Dracul Mihawk. The strongest swordsman of the One Piece world, Zoro challenges him to a fight in order to claim Mihawk's title. To his surprise, Mihawk pulls out a knife to fight him rather than his actual weapon, and he demolishes Zoro with it, while remarking that one does not hunt a rabbit with a cannon, absolutely shattering Zoro's honor. Dio's evil knows no bounds. In the first parts of Jojo, Dio is so insanely evil and bloodthirsty that he wipes out entire bloodlines to fulfill his vampiric lust. When confronted by Zapelli, who asks him how many lives he has consumed, Dio responds with the iconic, I don't know, how many loaves of bread have you eaten? Well, is it comparable to the evil of Subaru Mimasaka, the copycat chef? Imagine spending your life perfecting a certain dish which you hold very dear to your heart. Then, in a cooking competition, someone cooks up the exact same dish as you just to annoy you, and that dish is always better than yours. That's the superpower of Subaru, the copycat chef, who prides himself on disrespecting his enemies. Next, we move on to the king of comedy, Gintama, and the disrespect often shown towards the Shogun. The Shogun Shige Shige was a really good sport, and he handled the humiliation and disrespect meted out to him by the Yoruzuya with great grace. In his debut episode, the Shogun is stripped naked and is running across the streets of Kabuki, looking for underwear. When Sarutobi gives him an underwear, the Shogun brushes her hand as a way of thanks, but is then thrown into the river. Let us now turn towards Sasuke Uchiha treating his future wife like utter garbage. Early Naruto had some amazing comedy moments, but the best ones were often between Sasuke and Sakura, and the latter's crush on the detached Uchiha. When asked whether he thinks of Sakura as ugly or pretty, he responds by saying, you're both, you're pretty ugly. The ultimate rejection. At number 2, we have Killua demonstrating his assassin skills in an incredibly brutal manner. During the tournament saga, Killua faces off with Jonas, a bulky man who is threatening to pick apart Killua into pieces. As the audience fears for the little boy's fate, he takes a quick lunge toward him and before anyone knows what has happened, he shows off Jonas' heart, which he has ripped out of his chest, to him. As his opponent falls to death, we are left applauding Killua's insane disrespect. Our first spot goes to Luffy, ordering Usopp to burn the flag of the world government. What a scene this was. After invading Ini's lobby, one of the three pillars of the world government, Luffy is told by the head of CP9 that he's picking a war with the world. In response, the Straw Hat captain orders Usopp to burn down the flag on top of Ini's lobby. 
declaring his intentions to go to war with the government to save his friend. The ultimate disrespect. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more anime related content and click on this other cool video to see more. Bye!